Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about intoxication with different alcohols. Before we dive into the intoxication with different alcohols, let's quickly recap the differences between ethanol, methanol, and ethylene glycol. Ethanol, methanol, and ethylene glycol are all types of alcohols with different chemical properties and uses. Here are some of the key differences between them. First, the chemical structure. Ethanol, also known as ethyl alcohol, has a two carbon chain with an hydroxyl group attached to one of the carbons. Methanol, also known as methyl alcohol, has a one carbon chain with a hydroxyl group attached to it. Ethylene glucol has a two carbon chain with two hydroxyl groups attached to the different carbons. The second difference is the use. Ethanol is the most commonly consumed alcohol found in beer, wine and spirits. It is also used as a solvent and fuel. Methanol is used as an industrial solvent, antifreeze and fuel. Ethylene glycol is used primarily as an antifreeze in car engines and as a solvent. The third difference is the toxicity. While ethanol is generally safe to consume in moderation, methanol and ethylene glycol are highly toxic and can cause serious health problems or even death if ingested. Methanol can cause blindness and other neurological damage, while ethylene glycol can cause kidney failure and other severe health problems. The fourth difference is the metabolism. Ethanol is metabolized primarily in the liver through a series of chemical reactions that convert it into acetaldehyde and then into acetic acid, which can be used by the body for energy. Methanol and ethylene glycol are also metabolized in the liver, but they are converted into toxic substances that can cause damage to various organs. The fifth and last difference is the treatment. The treatment for acute methanol and ethylene glycol poisoning is different from that for ethanol intoxication. In the case of methanol and ethylene glycol, antidotes such as fomepisole or ethanol are given to slow down the metabolism of these substances and reduce the formation of toxic byproducts. In contrast, there is no specific antidote for ethanol intoxication and treatment usually involves supportive care such as IV fluids and respiratory support as needed. Acute intoxication with ethanol can result in a range of symptoms depending on the amount consumed. Mild symptoms can include impaired judgment, loss of coordination and slurred speech while severe symptoms can include vomiting, loss of consciousness and respiratory depression. In extreme cases, acute ethanol intoxication can result in death due to respiratory or cardiac arrest. The amount of ethanol needed to produce intoxication symptoms varies from person to person, depending on a variety of factors such as body weight, muscle mass, age, metabolism and tolerance to alcohol. However, even low levels of ethanol consumption can produce some symptoms of intoxication, such as impaired judgment, decreased coordination, slurred speech and altered mood. For example, consuming one or two drinks within a short period of time can produce these effects in some people. The metabolism of ethanol occurs in several steps and includes different enzymes. The first step in the metabolism of ethanol is the oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde by the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. Acetaldehyde is a toxic substance that can cause unpleasant symptoms such as facial flushing, nausea and headaches. The next step in the breakdown of ethanol is the conversion of acetaldehyde to acetic acid by the enzyme acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Acetic acid is then converted to carbon dioxide and water, which can be excreted from the body. 
individuals with genetic variations that affect the activity of the enzymes ADH and ALDH may experience different responses to alcohol consumption. For example, individuals with a genetic variant that results in reduced activity of ADH may experience increased levels of acetaldehyde, leading to more pronounced symptoms such as facial flushing and nausea. Similarly, individuals with genetic variations that affect the activity of ALDH may experience increased levels of acetaldehyde, which can lead to similar symptoms. Other enzymes, such as cytochrome P452E1, also play a role in the metabolism of ethanol. Cytochrome P452E1 is involved in the oxidation of ethanol to acetaldehyde and is particularly important in the metabolism of large amounts of alcohol or chronic alcohol consumption. In summary, ethanol metabolism and breakdown involve a series of enzymatic reactions in the liver and genetic variations that affect the activity of these enzymes can significantly influence the way that individuals respond to alcohol consumption. Ethnic groups can have differences in ethanol metabolism due to genetic variations in the enzymes responsible for the breakdown of ethanol. For example, individuals of East Asian descent may have lower levels of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase compared to other ethnic groups. This can result in slower metabolism of ethanol and increased levels of acetaldehyde, which can cause facial flushing, nausea and other unpleasant symptoms. On the other hand, Individuals of European descent may have higher levels of ADH compared to other ethnic groups. This can result in faster metabolism of ethanol and lower levels of acetaldehyde, which may lead to less severe symptoms. Other genetic variations in enzymes, such as acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and cytochrome P452E1, can also influence ethanol metabolism and a risk for adverse effects of alcohol consumption. It is important to note that while ethnic groups may have differences in ethanol metabolism, individual variations in genetics and other factors can also significantly influence how an individual responds to alcohol consumption. As such, it is important to approach alcohol consumption on an individual basis, taking into account personal health history, family history, and other relevant factors. It's also important to note that heavy or chronic alcohol consumption can lead to tolerance, which means that higher amounts of ethanol may be required to produce the same level of intoxication. Additionally, the effects of ethanol can be influenced by other factors such as the presence of food in the stomach, hydration status, and the use of other drugs or medications. Therefore, it is difficult to provide a precise answer to the question of how much ethanol is needed for intoxication symptoms, as it can vary widely depending on the individual and circumstances. Methanol, on the other hand, is a toxic alcohol that is often used as an industrial solvent and is not intended for consumption. Methanol can be found in antifreeze, windshield wiper fluid, and some paints and solvents. When ingested, methanol is metabolized into formaldehyde, which is further metabolized into formic acid, a toxic substance that can cause metabolic acidosis and damage to the optic nerve and so lead to blindness. Ethanol intoxication occurs in several stages each with its own characteristic symptoms and effects on the body. These stages can vary depending on the individual, the amount of ethanol consumed and the rate of consumption. The first stage is euphoria. At low levels of ethanol consumption, the initial stage is often marked by a feeling of euphoria. The person may feel more sociable, talkative and relaxed. The second stage is excitement. As ethanol consumption increases, the person may become more excited, restless and less inhibited. Judgment and coordination may become impaired 
and the person may experience difficulty with tasks that require fine motor skill, such as driving or writing. The third stage is confusion. As the blood alcohol concentration continues to rise, the person may experience confusion, slurred speech and impaired memory. Reaction time and reflexes may also become slowed, increasing the risk of accidents or injury. The fourth stage is stupor. At higher levels of ethanol consumption, the person may enter a state of stupor where they are unresponsive or barely conscious. Breathing may become slow and shallow, and a person may be at risk of choking or developing a dangerous drop in body temperature. In the fifth stage is coma. In severe cases of ethanol intoxication, the person may enter a coma or experience respiratory failure, which can be life-threatening if not treated promptly. Other toxic symptoms include hypoglycemia, lactic acidosis, metabolic acidosis, hypothermia and arrhythmias. Complications connected with acute alcohol intoxications, often seen in chronic alcoholics, are cranial trauma, hypoglycemic coma, stroke, gastric hemorrhage, acute pancreatitis, acute heart failure, acute hypertensive crisis, acute toxic hepatitis, aspiration pneumonia, and sudden death. The treatment of ethanol intoxication occurs in several steps. First, we want to stabilize the patient and, if necessary, offer cardiovascular and respiratory support. Once the patient is stabilized, we want to decontaminate the gastrointestinal system. This can occur by promoting emesis or by performing a gastric lavage, which is effective within one hour after ingestion. If a patient is found to be in sopor or coma, this has to be done after intubating the patient. In the next treatment steps, we want to administer intravenous vitamin B1 and B6, as well as bicarbonates and glucose. Caffeine and other stimulants are not recommended, as they can provoke seizures. In the next step, we want to promote diuresis by infusing 2 to 3 liters of saline and glucose solution over 24 hours. How can we treat alcohol withdrawal? Alcohol withdrawal is a potentially serious condition that can occur when an individual who is dependent on alcohol suddenly stops or significantly reduces their alcohol consumption. Withdrawal symptoms can range from mild to severe and may include physical, emotional and behavioral symptoms. The symptoms of alcohol withdrawal typically begin within several hours to a few days after the last drink and may include tremor, anxiety, insomnia, seizures, hallucinations, disorientation, excessive sweating and diarrhea. Severe alcohol withdrawal, also known as delirium tremens, can occur in approximately 5% of individuals experiencing withdrawal and can be life-threatening. This may include symptoms such as agitation or confusion, high fever, tachycardia, seizures and delirium. Treatment for alcohol withdrawal may involve medical management to help alleviate symptoms and prevent complications. In this case, we can use benzodiazepines, haloperidol, vitamin B1 and B6, and rehydration therapy with saline and glucose solutions. In mild cases, treatment may include supportive care such as rest, hydration, and over-the-counter pain relievers. In more severe cases, hospitalization and medication may be necessary. The symptoms of acute methanol intoxication can be similar to those of ethanol intoxication, including headache, nausea, vomiting and impaired coordination. However, as methanol is metabolized into formic acid, more severe symptoms can occur, such as abdominal pain, seizures and blindness. The initial symptoms of methanol intoxication can appear within a few hours of ingestion and may include dizziness, 
headaches, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and visual disturbances such as blurred vision or snowy vision. As the toxicity progresses, the symptoms can become more severe and may include seizures, respiratory distress, metabolic acidosis, and even coma. The lethal dose of methanol is estimated to, to be around 30 to 240 milliliters for an average size adult. However, even small amounts of methanol ingestion, such as 10 to 30 milliliter, can cause significant to toxicity and require prompt medical treatment. It's also important to note that methanol can be found in a variety of sources, including some alcoholic beverages that are improperly distilled. Therefore, it's important to be aware of the potential sources of methanol and to seek medical attention immediately if you suspect methanol ingestion. Treatment for methanol to intoxication typically involves supportive care, such as IV fluids, bicarbonate therapy, and hemodialysis to remove the methanol from the bloodstream. Another treatment option is the administration of an antidote, such as fomepizol, which blocks the metabolism of methanol. Another antidote is the administration of ethyl alcohol with a concentration of 95%. In this treatment option, a slow intravenous infusion is given and the ethanol levels in the blood must be at least 1 per mil. This treatment is effective because ethanol is a competitive inhibitor of the methanol oxidation process and so prevents the formation of toxic metabolites. Methanol is metabolized by the same enzyme as ethanol, which is the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase. During the metabolism, formaldehyde is created, which is the culprit of the severe side effects of methanol poisoning. In individuals with a higher level of activity of the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, more methanol is metabolized to formaldehyde more rapidly, and so leading to severe symptoms more rapidly. So basically, the enzymes that make ethanol less harmful make methanol in its metabolism more harmful. Ethylene glycol is another toxic alcohol that is used as an industrial solvent and is found in antifreeze and some solvents. Ethylene glycol is metabolized in the liver into glycolic acid and oxalic acid, which can lead to renal failure and calcium oxalate crystal formation in the kidneys. The symptoms of acute ethylene glycol intoxication are similar to those of ethanol and methanol intoxication, including nausea, vomiting, and impaired coordination. However, as the ethylene glycol is metabolized into toxic substances that can damage the kidneys, more severe symptoms can occur, such as oliguria, anuria, and metabolic acidosis. Treatment for ethylene glycol intoxication typically involves the administration of an antidote, such as fomepizol or ethanol, which can block the metabolism of ethylene glycol and prevent the formation of toxic metabolites. The lethal dose of ethylene glycol is estimated to be about 1 to 2 milliliters per kilogram for an average sized adult. Therefore, a lethal dose for an average sized adult weighing around 70 kilo would be approximately 70 to 140 milliliter. However, even smaller amounts of ethylene glycol ingestion, such as 30 milliliter, can cause significant toxicity and require prompt medical treatment. In conclusion, acute intoxication with alcohols such as ethanol, methanol and ethylene glycol can have serious consequences on a person's health and well-being. While ethanol is the most commonly consumed alcohol and is legal, methanol and ethylene glycol are not intended for consumption and can be fatal when ingested. It is important to seek medical attention immediately if you or someone you know experiences symptoms of acute alcohol intoxication, as prompt treatment can save lives. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you very much and hopefully see you again in the next video.